Oh, good morning. Saturday the 20 something, 20 something of April. Live from Lanark. Isn't that beautiful? Morning Mags, hope you're well. Morning Heather, hope you're well. Beautiful morning. Absolutely stunning. Oh well. Ralph's eating grass. Say hello Ralph. Hello. Right. I'm about an hour late this morning because not because I was tired, just because I didn't want to rush. And I thought that would be quite nice to give myself that. How are you everyone this morning? Are you well on this Saturday morning? Hi Ross. I'm really good, thanks. Brilliant Mags. I've been out with the dog this morning. So we've been doing a little sequel and oh there's a dead squirrel. Stay away from the dead squirrel, Ralph, it's stinky. Oh, I'm sorry you're dead. Right, so I'm feeling a wee bit I'm feeling a wee bit in slow go slow mode today, but here we go, right. Get my act into gear. We are on we're doing the programme that I like to work with people that are committed to the process to go through this. This is the way we work and see what it brings up for them. Right? I call it follow the 12. And what we've done is we've done the ordinary life. We've realised that our life's a bit boring. But really what's happening in the ordinary life is that the equilibrium of the ordinary life has went way too much into too much ordinariness. And what we've really got to do in that point is take a risk to bring balance, to restore order back into the ordinary world. Right, so... Your life's just much of the sameness. You go into step two, which is you're hearing the call for adventure. You know, there's something inside you that's tugging at you. You might be saying to yourself, I'm drinking too much, or this is just a humdrum, or life's became like Groundhog Day, or whatever. And you need to do something different risky maybe in order to bring some equilibrium back into your ordinary world step three the refusal of the call we just completely and utterly refuse it um step four we meet the mentor that can come in any shape or form step five we cross the threshold into the spirit but a special world and then step six which is where we meet the allies the friends and the foes on the journey the journey starts to the journey starts to unfold. So I kind of did uh, step four, no, step five and step six kind of together yesterday. So I'll start off with a uh, meeting the uh, morning Pamela. Slow to to the morning too, mindful movement so far. Nah, I'm not really mindful. If I'm being really honest, I just kind of was like, I felt really, you know, that nice tired way. I wasn't being slow because I was being spiritual or anything like that. I just kind of... I've had a busy, busy week and I just felt a wee bit tired. But that tiredness, that was nice. Um, Stephen Sneddon, good morning. Okay, so when you meet these... You start to meet these shadow archetypes along the way. Now... I was thinking about doing the process today, which is... Morning, Lewis. How are you? I'm really well. I'm on live. Hi. Hi. You doing fine? <laughs> Say hello. How we doing? This is Lewis. Oh, we should be two Hi. metres apart. Well, but we know we're clean. I'm clean as. Yeah, you started doing this run? Hi, I just done it this morning. Cash in a moment at um, walking on it, so... Right, brilliant. Enjoy it. Right, super. Great time, right, buddy, have a fantastic day, and we'll start that 21 day thing. Hi, yeah, week on Monday. Week Monday, right, perfect. Bell me. Through. Yeah, man. See ya. Take care. Um, sorry, completely distracted there. Um, yeah, so I was thinking this morning about doing this talk today and then doing it in order. And you know what? 
I'm just going to completely sidewind because I don't feel like doing it in order. Um, it's Saturday, we can pick up that at another point. You know, so really it's going into the cave today, that which that, that which fears you most is where you'll find your strength is really what we would be talking about today, but my head's sort of full of a load of rambling thoughts and so I thought I would share them with you and also put the brakes on a little bit and I'm going to explain why that is. So through st talking with, and I have permission to say this chap's name, Stephen yesterday, Stephen and I were chatting yesterday and I had learned and I'm saying that I was really naive uh, because when I started these videos and jumped straight in, the first ones that I did were on the 12 step process, right? And I did step one to 12 and we did them in six days, right? For those of you that didn't watch that on the YouTube channel, I've recorded them and put them all up there, right? And I was chatting with Stephen yesterday afternoon and what I had learned because I was completely naive and I hadn't really thought about this was as I was going through those 12 steps and delivering them in an educational forum, I was actually going through them myself, right? And I didn't know that it was going to bring up as much stuff as what it did as I was going through them. And Stephen and I were talking about it yesterday and I was like that, had I known, I should really have had my sponsor by my side every day on call because as I was going through every single step with you guys, which I thought was educational purposes, I was actually getting thrown into a washing machine, right? And I was in absolute turmoil. Um, so I went through the 12 step process uh, in six days and my head was completely battered. So again, I never learned the lesson with that. And what I did was I then started these talks, um, which is follow the 12, which is a 12 step, 12 step meaning process that I use or invite clients to work with when we're going through a 12 week program. So only yesterday when I was talking with Stephen, did I realize that I'm now going through these follow the 12 and of course I'm in it. So yesterday, it was crossing the threshold into that other world, into that new world where you've got to fight shadows and all the things that will want to pull you back and tell you you're no good enough. And you know you've got to fight through, and you meet the you meet the gargoyles, and you meet the you meet the dark nights. So I'm going to share a story with you this morning, right? So yesterday, after I was speaking to Stephen about this and these realizations that I'd had that I was burning through these processes really, really quickly, right? I thought, so that's why I'm taking a wee bit of a break today. I'm kind of going to tell you a wee bit about the fall of the 12th, but I'm also sharing some insights that I've had that I hope are helpful for you. So if you're, catch, if you're following that, that's where I'm at, right? So yesterday, I, um, I'm in now. I've crossed the threshold, and I'm now into that other realm, that other world that perhaps could be classified as mystical world, that mystical realm. And it started to get quite intense. So yesterday I was going out with the dog and I was going down to I was going down a, I was going down a walk with the dog and I walked out of the house and within two minutes of being out of the house I met this young guy. He came to me a couple of years ago for assistance. Now an absolutely lovely guy. Really, really nice fella. Not that Nice people don't get caught up in heroin, but they do. But this young guy started, this young guy started uh, experimenting with heroin. He went straight for like you know a couple of beers at the weekend to heroin, and um, he's been dancing around with it. And straight out the front door, boom, bumped into him. And uh, hey, how you doing? What's been happening with you? Hi, hi, I'm doing really well. He says, I'm doing really well. I says he managed. To get, yep, yep, yep. And he says, wait till I tell you this. Wait till I tell you this. He says. Um, I had a friend came to my door yesterday, full of Valium and full of, full of, full of H, full of heroin, right? And uh, I let him in, and I'm just standing there listening to him. He says, and I let him in my front door, blah, 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 and he came in and sat down, and he's, he's rattling away, he's smoking kit on foil, he's smoking foil. 
and I see that somebody's just come in that lives quite close by to him, so um, that's okay. I asked him if I could talk about this because that's kind of where it started yesterday. So we're not mentioning any names. So he's got this guy in his living room and he's smoking. The guy's full of Allium, mashed up, smoking bags in front of him. And he went, you know, Ross, I sat there and I never even thought about it. He says, I sat there and I never even thought about smoking heroin. And he says, you know, um, I'm really, really pleased with myself. And I went, why did you let him into your house? And he went, oh, he's my best mate. I says, he's your best mate? I says, your best mate wouldn't come into your house and smoke gear and even think about coming to your front door full of Valium if he knew that you were four months into sobriety, if you were four months into being clean. And he was like that, aye, aye, I know, but I had to. I said, you had to do what? You had to answer your door, you had to let him in. He went, aye, I had to let him in. I says, all right, okay. For what reason did you need to let him in? He said, because that would have caused more inconvenience with my neighbours if my neighbours had saw him, because he might have caused a scene outside. I says, but he's your best mate. So your best mate thinks it's appropriate to come to your house full of Valium, a couple of bags of, a couple of, bags of kit on him, Right, big wrap, big roll of big roll of kitchen foil, big roll of tin foil. You know, it doesn't look strange. But in social isolation, there's a guy walking down the street, walking like that, halfway left with a big stroke of tin foil hanging out his pocket. That doesn't look strange to you. The neighbours wouldn't have thought anything about that anyway. Pure grey, sucked in like that. I said, so you thought it was all right to let him in through your front door? He says, aye. I says, all right, okay. And um. We started getting into a conversation, but do you not think I done great? I said, no, I don't think you did great. And he's looking at me like that. I said, I said, the devil will wear me that. I says, the devil wears many masks. I said, the devil comes in many forms. He says, aye, but I refused it and I never had any thoughts about it. I says, that's right, you did. I says, and you know what? Your mind will let you away with that once, twice, three times, maybe seven times, maybe ten times. Right? I says, and that'll just feed right into your false pride and your ego. I says, and you'll think you've got it together. You'll think you've conquered heroin. You have conquered the heroin addiction, right? I said, but you're playing with fire and the devil's got you. I says, because then what that'll do is it'll tell you that you think it's okay to have a bag. I go and get a tenner bag. Look, you've, refu you've refused it ten times. You're going to be all right. So I says, and he started, he kept at it, and I just went, no. Do you know what? You're playing with fire. I says, and if you keep dancing with that, you're going to get burned. It was a wee bit more deep and meaningful than that. But that was a conversation that came straight out after I'd spoke to Stephen. And what I realised was that I was crossing the threshold into this other world where I was starting to get, I don't mean it, but signs, signals, you know. Um, and why, I, why I'm talking about that is, it's like, one of the parts of this follow the 12 is, is learning to follow your bliss. And when I talk about following your bliss, it's not hedonistic, sensory pleasures of, you know, having loads of sex and partying and being hedonistic. That's not what I mean when I say follow your bliss. It's follow your serenity. It's follow your peace. What is that bliss? Your bliss is something that you find that you just cannot do. And when you do it, time disappears, right? So, I absolutely love working in the field of addiction. And the reason I love working in the field of addiction is because I identify so greatly with that battle between the dark side and the light. You know, where Luke Skywalker has to kill his father. Where Darth Vader's saying, come over to the dark side. Do not fall the way that Obi-Wan Kenobi met his fate. But you've got that much resilience in you, as Luke Skywalker did, that he was willing to die for his cause. He was willing to die rather. He, um, he would rather. He would rather die than turn to the dark side. Now, the reason I love working in the field of addiction so much is because I have lived in the dark side, and I would rather die than go back there. Right? I absolutely. Now, did I get it first time round? Did I get it second time round? And that darkness has came in other forms, not necessarily through drug and alcohol addiction, because I've been sober for like for eight, forever. But it's came in the form of relationships. It's came in the form of the relationship with myself. Just because I'm sober for drugs and alcohol doesn't mean to say that I've got destructive forms of behaviour or finding myself in situations that I shouldn't be in. Um, and 
because I can identify now so strongly with where I had took my life to get to, where I was allowing people to judge me, to see me as lesser than, that I'm not as good as them, to be spoken to the way that I was spoke, be, being spoken to in relationships. And then because I didn't have the capacity to manage that, what I found the only way could be would be, I would, I would be, I would slam doors and disappear and go and jump in the motor and disappear for ages. Right now, to me, that's no love. That's no following your bliss. That's no happiness, right? And see when you actually get the taste of happiness, which is bliss, which is doing what you, which is doing something that you love so much, right? I believe the devil is in all of us. Could be just in some of us. I don't even know if there's a devil. It's just a metaphor that I use, Susan. So follow your bliss. Well, what is your bliss? If it wasn't about money, it wasn't about feeding the wains, it wasn't about paying the mortgage, what would you be doing? What is it that when you do it, time just disappears? And for me, that's the job I do. That's why I do it. I abs time just disappears. I could be in a session that's an hour and it feels like five minutes. I completely vanish. That's why I love it. That's me following my bliss. So why this isn't really following the format of the way it is I'm repeating myself is because when I chat with Stephen yesterday, I had the realisation that when I was doing the 12-step process where you all very, very quickly, I was going through it and I was starting to burn. My brain was starting to bile. So I'd done the 12-step process rather in-depthly at hyperspeed, right? And um, the same thing's happening here. So as I've crossed the threshold, there's very there's lots of symbolic things starting to happen in my life. So I'm slowing it back a bit. So that happened yesterday. Then there was something else that in my dreams last night were, God, wacko. And then I was running this morning and I absolutely, I so wish I had stopped and took a picture of it because it was perfect to have showed you this. It was, it was um, at the side of the river. There was a little kind of stream of water going down into the river. And at the side of the path, there was an apple, a brilliant red apple, like the apple depicted in Snow White, where I bite out it. Now, I know that the fruit from the forbidden tree wasn't an apple. We believe it was an apple. We were told it was an apple. It's probably something more like a pomegranate, but there you go. Um, when we say that people ate the fruit from the forbidden tree or that Adam and Eve ate the fruit from the forbidden tree, a lot of us think it's an apple, so let's just go with this. So that's what that meant for me. So it kind of knocked me. So I saw it and it knocked me and I started thinking about that. I started thinking about the apple and what that meant for me. And really, anywhere where we eat the fruit from the forbidden tree, which is where we've went against our own grain, where we've went against our own bliss, we're dead. We're dead inside. We're robotic. We're going to a job that we don't like. Now, a lot of people in this kind of new age world would say, oh, make your vacation your... No, make your vocation your vacation. I don't necessarily think that's completely true either, that you can do a job that you're completely happy in. See, even if you can get a job that you're 75% happy in and it gives you those tokens to allow you to go into pursuits, be that mountain biking or playing at the weekend or DJing or whatever it is that you do, buying records. Showing my age there. Downloading MP3s. Um... So when I saw the apple, it kind of knocked me a wee bit, and that's when I that's then when I realised that since the conversation with Stephen yesterday lunchtime, the reason I'm putting the brakes on it a wee bit is because I crossed the threshold with you yesterday. I entered into this new world, this new way of being, and I'm starting to look well. Again, I don't think symbols are being dropped from the sky. I don't think God's putting the apple in front of me. I think it's just my awareness. As I was saying yesterday, if, or I was saying in the talk I did about COVID-19, depending what lens you look at reality through, if, you're looking at, if you look at reality through the lens of conspiracy theories and COVID-19's happening, well, of course, all these conspiracy theories buy into it. But if you're into the book of Revelations and end times in the Bible, right... And then this is all happening. Floods, fires, famine, locusts, you know, world's locked down. You know, that buys right into your, your lens of reality that we're in the end times. So as I'm going through these follow the 12, I'm identifying with them. So they're showing up in my reality. And I saw this apple and it had the bite out and I started to think about that. And I thought, could this be a time that we're living in? that 
is very much whatever you look for, you will seek. If you are stepping towards fear and anxiety, you're going to get fear and anxiety. If you step towards good and see good, you will get good. If you start to look at the world through a construct or a lens of love, you'll start to get love. I don't have the answer to that, it's just started coming. But to keep it on track, we follow the 12. Today's one is going in to the cave, going into the thing that fears you most. Now, there's a great quote by Nietzsche and it says, a snake which is unwilling to shed its skin must perish. Right? And if you're sitting right now, and I get that you're in fear, I completely get that. I get that there's money worries. And believe me, I think and hold a lot of people that I know right now in my prayers and my thoughts. I really do. I feel for so many people that there's a struggle going on right now. But if you're resisting what could be in this times, a call a call to adventure, a call to doing something else, and you don't have the tools, and you don't have, you've not met the mentor, and the only way that you know how to get through this is through hitting the drink or hitting drugs, like that guy yesterday, stoking about full of Valium and heroin. And one of the things I says to the guy was, I says, you're not, one of the things I says to the guy last night was, I said, you're nowhere near ready. And I went like that with a lighter, as if it was on an invisible piece of foil. I says, even when I do that run with my lighter that's all invisible right now, your brain's lighting up programs that you want he heroin and you think it's safe to allow that kind of people into your house. My question is, what kind, what are you allowing into your house? What are you allowing into your house that's debilitating rather than moving you forward, progressing you in these times? When you're having conversations with people, are you getting into conspiracy theories? Are you getting into the fear around money? Are you getting into the fear and everybody's in that together? This could be, and I don't know, I really don't. I'm just voicing my opinion. These times could be a, a unique time for us to develop and grow, but unless we've got the courage to go into the cave that finds therein lies our truth, therein lies the thing that will set us free. We're living in a world somewhere between neither it being good or being bad. We're living in that split world where we see things as either good or bad. And my dream last night that was a bit wacko was... Uh, yeah, I'll share it. It was like, I was handed this child, I was handed this baby, and I felt complete and utter joy, right? And I was very grateful, and I felt that feeling of gratitude, right? And then that baby was taken away from me, and I still felt exactly the same level of gratitude. And I woke up this morning at my usual time. I made a coffee this morning because I was super tired super raining and I thought to myself what would that mean if you were able to be completely equal about all the good things that happen and not get addicted to them and be completely okay with all the negative things that happens and don't get addicted to them either you would constantly be surfing on a crest of a wave how does that feel that feels like bliss could I have that I'm sure it's there, but I'm terrified. Um, absolutely terrified to step into that place where things could be a lot more flowing. But um, they were just rambling thoughts on a Saturday and making an excuse the reason why they are rambling thoughts as we're going through these at quite a speed. And uh, you've got to process them. And I found that since yesterday in my chat with Stephen that um, 
I feel as if I've crossed the threshold and I'm in. I'm look, it feels as if I'm looking at my world from a completely different perspective than I did before I began these on Monday or whatever. So if any of that resonates with you, let me see what Susan... Stephen, the devil addiction tells her pain is pleasure and tricks you into self-deception and leads you back to an addict. In recovery's view on it, we, are, we all have the devil and an angel, heaven and hell within us. Yep, Stephen and Susan. Susan Nestler, do you believe the devil is in all of us and it is our responsibility to love this part so he won't want her anymore? Because absolutely but you know we've been taught it from a metaphor that's very aligned with my thinking but you know you look at you look at philosophy you've or, or, or you know psychology the animus and the anime you know you've got the yin and the yang you've got the devil and god and these two parts are fighting within us all the time until we bring acceptance to them and that was a part that i was ashamed to talk about because what is my bliss my bliss, like, what did I really enjoy at school? I really enjoyed religious education, right? I really enjoyed it, loved it, loved, absolutely loved it at school. But my school was a bit fundamentalist Christian and I rejected Christianity for a while because I thought they were all a bunch of bloody hypocrites. And, um, and you know, I'm again, sharing this is, uh, I, I'm struggling to share this, but when I was a wee guy and my mum would vouch for this, I wanted to be a priest a minister and the amount of people that have guided me towards going into that as a profession since I started doing these videos has been insane but I don't think I'm ever going to be a minister I think I just love and can identify very very strongly with that battle between good and bad be that Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, be that the God and the devil. But you see, I think personally, Susan, right, for me, my thoughts on it is anything that you resist, you give power to. And a lot of us have been taught to resist the devil. So who is it that told me to resist the devil? Did they know that if I resisted the devil within me, I was actually giving the devil power? Right? And that took me a long time to get to that conclusion that I'd been re resisting the darkness in me for so long. And due to the resistance of it, I was actually empowering it. I was actually giving it strength. So, and it's been very, very recently in my, my, my development. Um, it was only actually, you know, it's been unfolding and I could understand it from a two-dimensional perspective. I could understand it through reading, studying it, doing courses about it. Done a lot of shadow work, union shadow work, got kind of certificates in shadow work. Uh, but it was only in September when I found myself being able to get to a place where my ego dissolved and I felt as if I had died. I had an experience which felt like death, that I was able to accept these shadows that were in me. And that seems to have disempowered them quite a bit. Have I grew to love them yet? Not sure. Have I certainly let them out the trap door? 100%. Um, and that's dissolved a lot of the power that I feel that they had. Does that make sense? Uh, morning, Sharon. Right, cool. They were just rambles this morning. And my bliss. So what's your bliss? Follow your bliss. What is that? It's not some hedonistic pleasures. It's no sex and... Well, hundreds of people were, you know, pursuing alcohol and drugs. It's what do you do that you can't not do, right, that's healthy, and that when you do it, time disappears and you disappear, right? And start giving yourselves more of that. And, I, I, you know, it's just curiosity. Be curious. What happens when you direct your attention towards something that's light and makes you feel good, makes you feel expansive inside, versus something that makes you feel terrified and you're like, ah! Right? And every cell in your body is screaming. Right? And you have the power to be able to just observe and watch and look and go, okay, do I want to step onto that square in the chessboard? Or do I want to do I want to step on the white square in the chessboard or the black square in the chessboard? How do I feel when I get involved with these behaviours? How do I feel when I argue with my partner? How do I feel 
How do you feel when you argue with your husband or your wife? How do you feel when your wife comes towards you for sex? How do you feel when your husband comes towards you for sex? Do you open up expansively? Or do you contract towards it? How do you feel when you're walking towards your work in the morning? Are you, yes, I love it, right? I love the banter, I love the boys, I love it all. Or are you like, oh, here we go, another hour and a half commute into the city of London, right? You know, um, how do you feel, right? And that's, that's, your, that's our choice because that's free will. That's what we're allowed to do that. And I think that, or I feel that rather, part six, I have actually explained it. I've just did it in a roundabout way and not necessarily followed the order of it. But until you've got the courage to step into your worst fear, walk into the cave, because in that cave, there is treasure. And I'll repeat, a snake that is resistant to losing its skin will surely perish. And if you're resisting change right now and you're resisting changing your skin and you want to identify with those old paradigms of behaviour that you think have kept you safe, then beware of the perishing which is happening around you and me for that matter. So have a fantastic day, everybody. And there's some awesome little things here. There's another couple of little waterfalls. There's another wee waterfall up there. Nature's awesome, isn't it? Right. Crack on, chaps. Have a great day. Look, we've even got a beach down there. See? See down through the trees at the other side of the river? That's dead easy to get to. That's really easy to get to. That's just like first bad corner at New Lanark. Park the car, walk down the hill over a wee bridge and there's a beach. Man. It's like... Halfway between Glasgow and Edinburgh, it's like Costa del Mar. It's awesome. Anyway, have an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you for being with my rabbles, I guess, somewhere. Those were my realisations. And I, too, have stepped over into the special world. And I am starting to see coincidences and synchronicities. And it was just beginning to get a little bit too much. So I just took the brakes off a wee bit this morning and chilled back a little bit on the gas and took it easy. So have a great day. Have a blessed Saturday. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Finish.